Uh, Andy, first of all, um, just something that's obviously been in the news the last couple of days, the abuse that was directed towards Connor Ripley at, at Carlisle. Um, just your reaction to, to obviously what happened there and, yeah. and what's being looked into, but but also it, it kind of happens in general, doesn't it, as well, is that the, this seems to be creeping in more and more into the game where footballers and other people around football get abuse. What, what's your take on it all? Um... <sighs> I've got to be obviously very careful what I say because, as you said, there, there is an investigation into what was said and directed towards Connor um, by members of the Carlisle supporters. And I have to say only one, not all of them. So we shouldn't tie everyone with the same brush. But I think, and I can only talk about football because obviously that's what I'm, I'm involved in, is that it's almost become something where because you've come to watch a game of football and you're a a fan of the opposition or a football fan in general that you can direct abuse verbally through your gestures, gestures to anyone you want and without any repercussions. Um, I don't think that these people will be saying these things in the street, um, in a shop, to footballers, football staff in general. Um, and it's unfortunately... Uh, it has crept into the game, like you said. I obviously, don't don't agree with it. People say, "Oh, we 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 can pay our money. We can say whatever we want." But I, I'm not sure you can, because as Connor rightly said on his social media, there's not many people know what's happening in Connor Ripley's life. Certainly not a Carlisle fan, and they won't know the repercussions of what they possibly said to him and what might have happened on the back of that. Um, so, yeah, that, that's my take on it. Because we're all human beings, after all, aren't we, really? And it doesn't necessarily matter what walk of life you're in. You could be doing anything, but because you're a footballer, it doesn't shouldn't open you up to that type of thing, should it? Because at the end of it, we're all we're all living on the same planet, I suppose, aren't we? Well, I would take it. I wouldn't walk into a well-known supermarket and start verbally abusing a member of staff because of the way they set up an aisle or they spilt some milk. We're all people, we're all human beings. I think Paul made a comment regarding his own supporters a few weeks previously at Blackpool when they'd, have, they'd lost the game. Uh, and he was, in his words, said he was disappointed with some aspects of the performance. But you, you go over to thank people for, for coming to support you. And you then sometimes get back, as I said, verbal and gestures back towards you. And is it nice? No. Is it something that we should put up with? No. But is it part of society? Yeah. Um, away from all that, um, on the on the pitch itself or, or, or off it, um, you've had one or two injuries. I know Jesse and, and Ben came off on Monday. Um, Tom Sang's still not around. Josh Thomas as well. Can you just clear up where, where you're up to with all those at the moment? Um, we've currently got what I would class as three long-term injuries. One medium-term injury and two short term as in available in January. We obviously had some illnesses the other day. Um, we are being hit and hit hard by injuries. I think we've come through a schedule of 10 games in, in 30 days, including the, the Stevenage FA Cup second round game up to Carlisle. And then we played four games in 10 days. Um, so We've we've been hit by our, hard by injuries. It's it's what it has allowed us to do is use some of the young players and, and give those guys some experience. Um, but it's something that we, we're now gonna we're gonna have to work through a period of time without some some really important players. Now, when you said there a couple of long term ones, can you say who they are at this stage? Well, obviously Mitch uh, and James Plant uh, fall into in my eyes the, the long term that they're not going to be back until mid late March. Um, which would then leave us a, a month of the season left. And it's obviously the other players who are currently out injured will, will fall into the, the other categories as well. So, yeah, so that obviously that would affect Josh's, will it affect Josh's loan? I know he's gone back to Swansea, but would you look at Yeah, listen, in since uh, Josh's last international call-up, we, we haven't seen him. So that was the that was the middle of November. The, the initial word was that it would be a three-week injury. He then suffered a setback. He's been ill over Christmas. He's commenced running the last few days. 
the early Steve will be back, which possibly the, the last week of January. Now, as all the loan players we've got, they've all got recall dates um, within the, the structure of their deal. Um, Josh's recall date is, is currently active, and and we'll, we have to see how that progresses. And, and I take it you've also got a recall date for Alfie as well, but again, I know you said after the game the other day there was no further dialogue on that. Yeah, both. Are, obviously, when, whenever you take a, a player on loan, there has to be a, a recall date within um, within January, so obviously both Kofi and Alfie have got those as well, yeah. Um, uh, looking at the, the window more broadly, you've, you've lost Ollie. Uh, obviously, that, that, that's that's happened. Um, does that then mean that you maybe look for more reinforcements in midfield, given Funzo's injury as well? As I said to you after the game the other day, Phil, we're we're actively looking in in all areas to improve us to from where we currently are. Um, just sitting below mid table in the league, and sometimes you then have to react. To what happens on the pitch, whether you pick up an injury uh, in, a, in a position you perhaps weren't planning to have to reinforce. Uh, so, as I say, because of what we've picked up certainly in this, in this last two weeks regarding midfield injuries, um, we, we have to look in that area. But as I've said to you before, we, we, we have to improve collectively. We've had a, a solid 29 points in 23 games at the halfway stage. If we maintain that in the second half of the season, I would imagine that would put us just below mid mid table, uh, the completion of the season. But I think that I think there's more in us. Have we been hit hard by injuries? It seemed like we've been, we've had we've been carrying six or seven injuries now since the middle of October, um, where we we start to pick up injuries and, and we found it a struggle since then to be consistent. Um, we've just had a really good December in terms of points, um, ten, ten points from the five games, uh, and the general data and, and stats we get back is that we've been a really high-performing team in, in December and, and we've picked up results on the back of really good performances. We have some standout issues that we have to correct and th those issues haven't just happened in, in December when we've collected 10 points. That's, it's been an issue for us the whole season. We, we, give, we give up big chances and if we want to pick up more points on a consistent basis, we have to eradicate that. Um, I've picked 13 different back threes in 24 games, which is which is... Incredible! I think any team which is consistent and wants to be successful, you have to build from a, a really strong base, and we haven't been able to do that through injuries, through individual performances, and it's something again we have to look at to solve because on the back of the, the constant changes in the back three, we've given up. We give up big chances in games to opposition. We give up clear clear opportunities. Um, and it's something that, that we have to improve at if you want if you want to have a better second half of the season. Um, just to, to stick on the, the transfer side of it as well, obviously outgoings too. Uh, I know you've talked about Tom and, and Lewis Cass, uh, who've not been involved in the matchday squad the last few weeks. Um, without putting you on the spot, are they two maybe that you would be looking to, to try and offload it during January mm -hmm. at all? Listen, we, we, we don't know what's going to happen. There's been some interest in both players. That will that will only go through. Um, there's obviously a, a player, two clubs, one selling, one buying, and an agent who all have to be happy with the deal. Uh, and if that's the case, um, we'll obviously make a decision. Uh, I suppose it's a matter of balancing all that up as well, because you may need them, but you might need to work things around to get more scope in the budget to get players in. And I suppose that that is a really tricky balance to strike, isn't it? Because in some cases, you might have to gamble by letting a player go. And as you've already found out, you might need a, a midfield player or a right back or whatever a week or so later. I suppose it's very calculated what you've got to do during. January. Yeah, we we have to we have to think in the long term best interests of the club. As well as the player, and does that mean that we may may be out without a player for a, a week or so before we can get someone else in? Possibly, uh, we we haven't got a crystal ball. As I say, we you have to react to things which happen every Saturday or, or Tuesday night. Uh, and does that change what you're having to do? You have to be adaptable um, and then come up with the right solutions. Uh, looking at Charlton, then they are a, a side obviously that probably haven't done as well as they would have wanted to this season as well. But they've got a very potent goal scorer in Alfie May and. That's going to be a real challenge, isn't it? Because you, when you've talked about the defending, you, you need to keep a player like that quiet, I suppose, don't you? Yeah, and that's easier said than done. I think his goal-scoring record over the last two or three seasons has obviously been very good. He, he was successful for Cheltenham uh, and then obviously moved along in the summer for a, a big fee. Uh, and his record so far in League One has obviously been very good. He, he's up there with the, the top scorers in the league. He's playing in a slightly different position to what he was at Cheltenham. Um, but yeah, they, they've, they're the in and around us in the league, as are 
Reading as our Wickham, um, and then obviously we finish off this month with, with Portsmouth. So it, it's 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 four games which we, we we spoke about this morning that I think he can almost then guide us into that last third of the season. We'll, we'll be up then around the, the 27, 28 games played. Uh, the window will then close, obviously at the end of January, uh, and we'll assess where we are. Uh, and we we have to think collectively now as a group what do, what can we achieve? What is what is expected of us? What what is a reasonable ask for, for for this group of players and we are short of points I think from what we should have done in the first half of the season we have to go off to a good start points wise we then went 11 games without a win uh, where in my opinion some of the performances we should have got more points from we didn't and we then finished off um, the, the, the back end of the calendar year in, in, in decent form, picking up, say, 10 points in five games. So we're, we're at that crossroads, in, in my opinion, almost now with, with the people we're now going to play in the next few weeks. Um, how do we come out of the transfer window? Do we come out a bit stronger? And if we do, um, and, and the injury god starts looking down on us in a better light, I think we can look forward to a stronger second half of the season. What, what is reasonable? Do you think, Andy? You said you know you've got to think about what's what's reasonably to be expected of the team. You know, what, yeah. what do you think that is? I, I I think if you put your honest hat on as as a, a football fan in League One, a manager in League One, a player in League One, you could almost predict what the top half of the table should look like. Um, there's one or two teams who are in that top half. Steam has been the, the, the one who's been there consistently mm. and who are obviously re doing really, really well. There's one or two teams who may be in the bottom half of the table where people would have said at the start of the season, I would have expected that team to be in the top half. Is it difficult to break that ceiling when you are competing against crowd, budget, calibre player? Of course it is. But it's the wonderful sport that we play in that you don't always end up where you should based on your budget etc etc so listen we're, we're always honest with ourselves we're, we're trying to better ourselves we, 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 we can't compete with Portsmouth Derby etc etc for a number of reasons but we'd want to better ourselves I want our players to become better players I want to become a better manager I want the season to end I think we've made real progress um, 29 points in the first half of the season if we could replicate that would be probably be a, a mid-table finish we finished fifth bottom, I think, last last season, whatever it was. So we, we we're making small gains, but but I'm I'm disappointed with the points total in the first half of the season. I think there's more in us, and I say I think some of our performances have we should have had more points. We haven't. We have to keep constantly keep looking at the reasons why and, and try and solve those those problems and those reasons and and, and have a positive second half of the season. Um, and we we want to achieve much more than than we have done already.